Hello, I am Sydney Graham Yepin, Enchanted Forest News, reporting live from a church to be the trial of the century. In a matter of moments, we are about to see quite possibly the most impressive clash of legal minds of this court or this country as seen since once upon a time. After years of delay, we are about to witness the trial of the big bad wolf. As many already, Mr. Wolf escaped a sentence of three counts of pumping and pumping with intent to destroy, two counts of attempted murder by ingestion, one count of grandmother impersonation, four counts of sheep abduction, and 17 counts of lurking ended in a mistrial. The result, a giant falling on the jury room as they were determining the verdict. Now, a number of parties have brought a class action lawsuit of against Mr. Wolf he gave to momentary compensation but they do have been an infringement on their rights. Ah, it seems the counsel for the plaintiffs has arrived and the unequaled Miss Fairy Godmother, accompanied by one of her clients, Red Riding Hood, and the young client's grandmother, Miss, or grandmother. And you are ready to read up in this gentleman? Mr. Wolf is a depraved, cold, calculating killer. And it is only his celebrity status that has saved him from the hands of criminal justice. His behavior is reprehensible and has completely infringed upon my client's rights to live happily ever after. That one was gonna get it! We're gonna string him up by his toes and shake him until all the money goes right here! Then, me and Daddy are gonna buy a nice new condo with a pool and Daddy! Now, dear, have a seat. That is an appropriate behavior for television, and we don't want to be wasting anybody's time. All of Miss Godmother's clerks are to mice at the midnight. Of this trial. 
this concept is that guilty is the opposite of not guilty and not guilty is the opposite of guilty. <coughs> That's it. Well then, shall we begin? Uh, uh, your, your honor, sir, I, um, have no, uh, count, counsel? Yes. What? Oh, oh, yeah, yes, yes, your counsel. Yes. Well, where is that? Why is it not here? Did you check in your pockets? In between the couch cushions, behind the refrigerator. What? Sir, that's, that's... Wait! You don't have a refrigerator? <gasps> that's not what I... How do you keep your milk fresh? <laughs> ah, you're a lawyer! Yes, that makes more sense. Yes, yes. Uh, who is that? Oh, she's a lot of fun. Miss Evil Stepford. I apologize, Your Honor. Everyone, for my lateness. What? Excuse me just a minute. We'll just stand then. Again, I apologize to everyone. May I inquire as to why you are late, Counselor? You know what? I would come with an excuse, but really, forget it. I don't do pro bono work, so I'm not all that excited about this case, to be honest with you. Plus, I think it's pretty much doomed to failure, so I didn't really prepare a whole lot. And I was kind of pulling some things together at the last minute. And I was up late last night yelling at my stepdaughter to clean the cinders out of the fireplace. So I thought I'd sleep in a little and treat myself to a nice long breakfast with my colleague and witness over there. So, are we going to get this thing going? Ah, I've got a facial scheduled up by. Oh, yes, yes. Right away. Objection. The trial hasn't even started yet. Your Honor, I object to the counsel for the defense's attitude. Clearly, she is making a mockery of this court, and you are allowing it. Oh, I, I am? I am! Well, that's not good. Miss Stepmother, a bit of wisdom. Being late is wrong. Wrong is the opposite of right. Right is the opposite of left. Therefore, because you are late, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Oh my god. That's it. Well then, court is now in session. Ah! Opening remarks, Miss Stepmother. I mean, Miss Godmother. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to correct a grave injustice. <coughs> because of a mere accident, Mr. Wolf was spared the punishment he rightfully deserves. He has lurked in the forest for years, preying on innocent little girls. Yeah! Shush, child, behave yourself. Innocent little girls, innocent little pigs, innocent little old women, innocent little boys, and Innocent little sheep. <laughs> My clients have been right threatened, tricked, eaten, and robbed. And I'm sure I'm leaving something out. Because of a mere accident, the twisted fiend over there will not receive the punishment he deserves. So we must take from him everything that we can. That beast over there must be left with nothing because he has left my client hurt, frightened, and homeless. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Godmother. And Miss Stepmother. Oh, um, no, I waive it. What? Yeah, you heard me. No statement. Thanks, though. Very well. Moving on. <coughs> You're not even going to try? You're not even going to do anything for me? Look, Wolfie, nobody's going to save you. And even if somebody were going to, it sure wouldn't be me. Oh, I'm gonna be robbed blind. Oh, come on, you did all of it, didn't you? Yes, but why won't anyone understand? Miss Godmother, call your first witness. Understand what? I call Miss Little Red Riding to the stand. What it's like. What it's like to have everyone hate you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? 
So help you, Hans Christian Anderson. <laughs> yes, sir. Red, sweetie, how are you, dear? I feel a whole lot better if I had that monstrous cash. Right, right. Well, now, Red, honey, why don't you tell the nice people on the jury what exactly happened between you and Mr. Wolf on the day in question? Yes, sir. Well, you see, I was walking through the woods, minding my own business, trying to get to my granny's house to bring her some bread, because she's old and sick and stuff. And then this horrible, scary wolf jumps out and pretends to be all nice and stuff. But I know he's creepy, and I'm like, that's awful. And he's like, man, come on, I'm nice and stuff. Want to see this short put or whatever to get to your granny's ass? I'm like, you know what? Shortcuts are good. I hate walking. It's for losers. And I guess this wolf won't make up some short put or whatever. So I start <coughs> walking. Turns out the pretty wolf did make it up. He gave me like no. a lot of credit sign so he could get to my granny's house first. And he her. My word. He ate her granny. Most certainly is. 
So, not only did the big bad wolf eat an old woman and her granddaughter, but he insisted that the old woman remove her eyeglasses, which she desperately needs in order to see before he did so. Yes, it was terrible, terrible. Ladies and gentlemen, we've heard that word before, haven't we? His sister's granddaughter described the events in the same way. Quite frankly, I think they are being kind, as it is in their nature to be. So not only did the defendant eat an old woman and her granddaughter, but he insisted that the woman remove her desperately need eyeglasses. Without her ability to see, the kind of psychological Mrs. Hood must have been doing would have been unthinkable. That's all, Mrs. Hood. Thank you, Miss Godmother. You may be seated. Miss Stepmother, you may examine the witness. Oh, I can examine this one? Thanks so much. Mrs. Hood, let me ask you this. Yes? How did the defendant get you to remove your glasses? Um, none of that is in the statement that you gave the authorities. Your statement just jumped from, the wolf came in, to, he ate me, to, then I was joined by my granddaughter in the wolf's stomach. That's all we get. Now, what happened? Well, uh, I do remember. I see you're not wearing glasses today. Do you own contact lenses, Mrs. Hood? Yes. And isn't it true that you were, in fact, wearing your contact lenses at the time that the wolf entered your cottage? Yes, it's true. Oh, so you were able to see just five minutes, weren't you? Yes, yes I was. I think I'm just about it. But you know, I have one more question. Yes? What sort of carpet do you have on your floor, Mrs. Hood? In what room? In your bedroom, of course. Um, wolf skin? <gasps> wolf skin? Why? Isn't that fascinating? And who made that carpet, Mrs. Hood? My late husband and myself. See. No further questions, Your Honor. Where did that come from? Hey, baby, I said it didn't work too hard on this case. Doesn't mean I'm still not the best there is. Besides, maybe I like you a little bit all of a sudden. That was a starting turn of events. Miss Charles may prove more of battle than Miss Fairy Godmother had planned. Oh, shut up. Nothing in the police report about why you went into the house. Did you hear a scream? 
no, not exactly. Did you see the defendant enter the house and become suspicious? No, I, I was snooping around the house. Okay. Snooping? <laughs> Whatever for? I'm looking for a kind of feel for one Why would you ever do that? I thought you were a hero. And while you were trying to steal something, you happened to see in the window what exactly? So that girl was in the only bit air was looking at shop! Well, right then, tell me though, how did you know? I mean, absolutely know for sure that Mr. Wolf had eaten your friends and that you were justified in cutting him open. Because that is what you did, isn't it? You cut my client open with an axe, didn't you? Yes, I did. How did you know, Mr. Woodcutter? Couldn't Mr. Wolf have been a friend of Mrs. Hood's that you didn't know? One who occasionally likes to wear her nightgowns? How did you know that he had eaten them and that the two women were simply in another room? Well, he's a wolf. Oh, so you've just got to cut him open then, eh? Because he's a wolf. Well, yeah. No other reason? Nope. No further questions, Your Honor. The witness witness is excused. Another shirt and cross-examination from Miss Sletleather. Shut up! Why don't we cut the commercial? Miss Godmother, do you have any further witnesses? Yes. I call the three little pigs to the stand. Objection! You can't call three witnesses at once. Your Honor, it is essential to my case that the witnesses be called at one time. It is? Well, no, but they insist on testifying together. And why is that? Your Honor, may I approach a bench? Oh, well, this is unorthodox, but I suppose so. Counselors, come join me. What is it? Ask him now. Can't What exactly do you mean? They're um immature. Now you can say they're stupid. They're too stupid. Oh, I see. Well, I see no problem, Miss Stepmother. I think I'm fine with that. Bert, you both. Three little pigs take the step. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, Hans Christian Anderson. Huh? <laughs> Good enough. Now, would you each please give the court your name? Tell my lady name. Oh, what is that name? Oh, name. Don't you mean? Don't worry about it. My name's. Tawel. <laughs> my name's Say. <laughs> now, er, oh, Daddy, can you tell me what happened to you and your house? I built the house, but it fell over. How did your house fall down? A fox fell down. A fox? Are you sure it wasn't a wolf? <laughs>
and threaten the boy up in the creek. And nobody got any able to help the boy out because, well, on the two days before, that's really now. Thank you so much, Mrs. Shepherdess. All right, I suppose. Yeah, so, no witness. <coughs> Very well. I'll be brief, Mrs. Shepherdess. Why don't you just tell us what happened the first two days you mentioned? Ah, uh, yes, well, on, on the first day, the boy cried out that there was a woman killed. And all of us in the village came to take a look. And there was no wolf. Then he did the same thing the next day. So on the last day, nobody done came to help the boy out. You see, so your boy isn't very reliable, is he? Well, I just made I no one but the boy actually saw my play. Take your sheep, Mark threatened him. Well, now. And the what? only way we can know who's this particular wolf is by hearing what the boy has to say, isn't it? <coughs> well, I suppose so, but this woman's testimony is essentially hearsay, Your Honor. Hmm. I see. Well, why are you still, why are you still talking to her? You are excused, Mrs. Shepherd. Does the counsel for the plaintiffs have any other witnesses that they'd like to call? Um, no. Very well. Miss Stepmother? Yes, well, the defense would like to call a surprise hostile witness then. <coughs> the defense calls the boy who cried wolf. Yes! <coughs> to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, Hans Christian Anderson. Yeah, I guess so. Very well. Tell me something, young man. Did you ever on any day see a wolf in the fields? Of course I did. The very day, it's like the old lady said. Huh? Well, right. Why did you pretend on the other days? Well, because I thought it'd be funny. Yeah. It was just all the stupid faces. Are you certain that the wolf you saw was my client? I guess so. I mean, they all keep saying to me those wolves. And I'm just wondering why specifically did you cry wolf rather than something else on the days when there is no wolf? Because well, everybody knows wolves are bad. Big and bad, you know? Oh, so wolves are just naturally bad, huh? Yep. But not little boys? What are you driving at, lady? Are you aware that a prank emergency call is a crime, man? Huh? Yeah, sure. So so you knew you were breaking the law when you cried wolf. Heck yeah. But wolves are naturally bad. Listen, I don't need to tell you later. No further questions, Your Honor. Well, can I go? I don't want to walk into the toilet. Miss Godmother, do you have any questions for the witness? No questions, Your Honor. Very well. Then the witness is excused. Miss <laughs> Several, do you have another witness? Yes. I'd like to call an expert witness to the stand. The renowned psychiatrist, Miss Muffin. She's top wolf specialist in the field, with years of hands-on experience in the deep, dark woods. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, Hans Christian Anderson. I don't like swearing. I'm afraid you must, Miss Muffet. Oh, Ari, yes, I swear. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> you may be seated, Miss Muffet. Oh, um. No. Pardon? I need a, uh, I need a, uh, a tuffet. Oh, oh, what? A tuffet, sir. She needs a tuffet. Oh, oh, yes, yes. A tuffet. Well, 
Someone go fetch the tuppets. I don't think anyone knows who that is. Oh, thank heavens, neither do I. <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, Ryan. She's, she's a bit neurotic, but she's the best psychiatrist around. If you have a tuppet anywhere, what's taking so long? This muppet requires a... A tuppet. I cannot sit without a tuppet. Right. <laughs> that. Like I always say, there's no such thing as a good psychiatrist without a sturdy tuppet. What in the name of all that is good as a tuppet? I don't know. I think she made it up. Why don't we just have her stay? Great idea. On this muppet, the court is unable to provide you with said tuppet. Do you mind standing? My legs are so tired. I need a tuppet. Please. Well... Oh, this is ridiculous! Stop. Just sit already! Ah! This is for my chair! This is my chair! Ah! I need some crimson weight! I need some crimson weight! Oh no, no! I need them some alley! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Some kids started screaming, Wolf! Wolf! He's taking the sheep! He's gonna eat me! I suddenly became enraged. How could this boy suspect me of doing that which I had sworn never to do? In a blind rage, I took his sheep and scared him half to death. I ate those sheep that night. I tried to pull my wits together, but every time I ran to a creature of another species, he or she would run from me, distrust me, scream or something of the sort. I never meant to hurt anybody, but gradually I didn't know how else to interact with the world. I turned, I turned to a life of crime. I, I did all the things I've been accused of. I admit it. But if any of you have any mercy, if any of you take any pity in me, maybe, maybe I'll be able to stop. That's all. I guess. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Does the counsel for the plaintiffs have any questions for the witness? No, I don't. Sure. In that case, the witness, stop the trial, stop the trial. As I was leaving, I saw the television, my broadcast, my brother. What? It's been too long. You know our casting works? My, my sister, wow, this is amazing. What? 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 Miss Fairy Godmother gave a brief closing statement in which she restated the facts brought by her witnesses. For the defense, Miss Stepmother said that Mr. Wolf had not been born a criminal, but made one, simply because of the society in which he had lived in had made him a such. <coughs> and he said that his ways might begin to change if the jury were to show some compassion. The first Mr. Wolf had ever known. We will return you to this court right now where they are about to determine the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm going to need you to deliver a verdict. But they haven't even left the room. 
We don't have time for that. Nobody will let jury duty. I always wish we could get on with it. All those lawyers going on and on, and those witnesses crying ahead. And those judges. And those judges. <laughs> Thank you. 